Good evening all. How are you? I just thought that you might want to see Mike the, Mike the Elf. <laughs> Good evening all. I was asked by, uh, hang on, let's get that right. I was asked by a couple of people to wear this tonight. So here we are, Merry Christmas. Or as merry as it can be. Uh, let's have a look. Hello Duncan, Barry, Tommy's Workshop. Uh, Brickhouse, good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, Hodgepodge, hi Hodgepodge. I'll just go through the chat. Chris Cox, good evening. Mike, you, how are you? Good evening to you. Dave Oti, good evening, Forking Owls, good evening, Forking. Uh, da, 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 da. Ronnie, good evening, Ronnie, how are you? Brian Hartwood, good evening to you, Brian. Nice to see you all. Have I caught up yet? No, I haven't. Leroy, good evening, Leroy. How are you? Douglas Mungum, good evening, Douglas. Simon, good evening. Filed Coast Wood Turning. Andy Best, good evening. Adrian Olson, good evening to you, sir. Welcome, Dave Shorten, Paul Morris, Matt364, Karen Browning, Circular Wood by Keith. Wish I could get all my circular Keith. Good evening to you. And uh, IDR. Good evening to you. Hi Debbie. Yes, thank you. I'm fine. I hope you're well as well. Hello Rob. How are you, mate? I need to message you, Rob. I can't <laughs> I can't find your um Facebook handle, as it were, to send you that picture. I haven't forgotten. Well, I had, but I haven't forgotten now. Good evening, David. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Reynold. Frederick Day, good evening. Oh, watching on the phone. Okay. <laughs> Hope you've got loads of 4G in your package. Derek from DL, how are you? Brian Stapley. Dave Brooks. Well, do you, do you like the hat, guys? This was supposed to be for my grandson or for me to wear over Christmas, but of course my son and daughter-in-law and grandson live in London and uh, Christmas is now cancelled, so I'm spending it with my good lady. Just the two of us. How's everybody else's? Good evening, Mark. How are you? Archie me, good evening. Sorry it's a bit late today guys, but um, the reason for it being a bit late, I've been working all day and I got home at about half past six. So uh, if I fall asleep, you know why. <coughs> okay Rob, thanks mate. Cheers. Evening Ian. Richard Phelan, good evening. Paddy Bean, good evening to you, sir. Well, I, I'm amazed. No one's mentioned the hat. Oh, yes, Steve Jeremiah. Hello, Steve. <laughs> oh, dear. And you, Alan. Season's greetings to you, too. Good evening, Julian. Harry Medill, good evening. John M., good evening. <laughs> yeah, I think... One forty nine. Chuck Smith, is that one forty nine AM? No, one forty nine in the afternoon, PM, that's right. Mike you again, hello. I've said hello to you, but I'll say hello again. <laughs> Joseph, have I missed you, Joseph? Sorry. Die Pro, good evening. Tony Davis, good evening. South Australia, nice one. Hello, Kevin. Kevin Newman, my old mate, how are you? Kilcut, Ian in the shed, I've said hello. Gentle turn, good evening, Martin. Spinning wood, Dodger, good evening. Douglas, oh no, that's Douglas, he's saying good evening too. Lenny, how are you? You made it. That's the second one you've made, Lenny. How are you? Ah, wonderful. Jennifer Stoughton, good evening, Jennifer. Make sure everybody says good evening to Jennifer. 
That's nice of you to say, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I was going to wear it to work, but um, I felt I might frighten too many young children. Not that there'd be many young children on the buses today, I must be honest. I think my nose is actually big enough, rubber dub, don't you? I mean, look at that in, on the side. Look. It, that's a fair old conk there, mate. I get more than my fair, fair share of air to breathe, let me tell you. Hello, Mick Stratton. How are you? I must try harder to upset you, Mick. I've got a very brief comfort break, and we all know what that means. Don't we? <laughs> Um, I just caught what uh, Bricko said. I think Shay is really busy this time of year. Uh, that's why he's not on, I think. <clears throat> he's put a lot of um, pictures up of stuff he does for craft fairs, Christmas craft fairs. He's been inundated, apparently. Let's put that away. <laughs> Thanks, Leroy. It's got to come off in a minute. I can't. I can't fit my rest. I'm turning a bit of U tonight, so I'll have to wear the respirator. I don't think that's gonna. It won't fit on top, will it? I look a bit like a, a young motorcyclist now. <laughs> I must warn you as well that there might be a loud whoosh during the evening. My. Uh, fan heater that I keep very local when I'm doing videos and live streams and that so it doesn't make a noise uh, has packed up so um, I've only got the space heater and it's quite cold here tonight so it might come on every now and again but I've set it quite low so uh, hopefully don't get a shock if you hear a noise because that's what it'll be or it could be the PCU flying off the lathe as well Philip Greenwood, good evening. Yes, I'm fine, thank you. I hope you're well as well, Phil. Okay, five minutes to go before we start. I had an early birthday present for those of you. I did a very, qu uh, very quick impromptu uh, a couple of days ago just to check out my uh, uh, lavalier mic. And because um, I've now gone cordless, which is brilliant. Um, I had an early Christmas present for my wife. Do you want to see what it is? I'll show you all very quickly. I'm not showing off, I'm just chuffed to beans. I and mean, it is a game changer, it really is. There it is, a diamond belt for the Sorby. An early Christmas present. She got it from uh, Mr. Oliver's wood turning. And I tell you what, it is, I never would have believed, it is really the business. It really is. Anyway, enough of that. Um, and I got a nice big lump of boxwood off a mate of mine. He dropped it off, and uh, that's nice too. Leona, good evening. How are you? John Brogdon, sorry, good evening. <laughs> yes, John, no, I. <laughs> Vaping off camera is okay, but there might be a wash, seriously, because I, I do have to um, stop the icicles forming on the end of my nose. And as I said earlier, the size of my nose, they'd be big icicles. Believe you me, they would be. A few minutes to go. Neil Good. Good evening, Neil. How are you? Oliver's wood turning. Good evening, Ed. While Oliver's on, um, you are, look. Mr. Oliver, send me a mug. With a diamond belt. That was nice, wasn't it? And actually, I got... 
a tea bag and a couple of chocolate coins. There we go. Pride of place. Oliver's Wood Third In Mug. I finally got one after all these years or all these months. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> I have to say, Ed, that diamond belt is an absolute game changer. I'm serious. It is fantastic. It really is. I tell you what, Leroy's saying he's doing something wrong. His wife never buys him any wood turning stuff. My boys are getting me some vouchers as well. So uh, that'll be good. But I don't suppose I'll get those till the new year now because they're not going to be seeing anybody. OK, a few minutes to go. Rob, question please. Do you have to buy something with diamonds in before your lovely wife now? <laughs> um, no, I bought my wife's uh, Christmas present back in about September. <laughs> so she'll be getting a, a little surprise present Christmas. Uh, but uh, no, it won't be diamonds. She doesn't actually like diamonds. I've got a, di a diamond home now, diamond cards and diamond belt now. I've got more diamonds than she has. <clears throat> evening, Stuart. Nick Murphy, good evening. You were missed yesterday morning, Mr. Oliver. What grill is the what grilt? What grit is the belt? asked Chuck Smith. Um, according to Mr. Oliver, it's around the 180 grit. It's a slightly different grit system to abrasive, you know, abrasive belts, but it's around the 180 grit. Well, I can tell you, it, it does. I've done. I've given all my. Um, I don't know. If, actually, that camera will do it better. I think. Excuse me. That's that there. Look. That, that's the. Um, that's what you get from the diamond belt. Absolutely superb. You know, you can look at the skew as well because I just I just run them all over there. It gives a really good, um, gives a nice mirror finish, but more importantly, gives a great edge. Uh, James, hello, James Cassidy. How are you? If I've missed anybody, welcome and thank you for arriving here tonight. And apologies for it being a bit later than usual, as I've explained to the ones that were in earlier, that um, I have to work today. And uh, I've got some commitments tomorrow, so um, I thought I'd do a late one, as it were. Um, I must also say to you, um, next week, either Sunday or Monday, um, Martin Saban Smith and myself are doing a collab on YouTube. We're going to have a bit of fun, a bit of turn-in fun after Christmas. Um, Martin's going to be hosting it, I think, and we're going to split screen and we're going to just have a, a bit of a giggle. So as soon as I know all the details, I will post all the links and let people know, as will Martin. So hopefully some of you will be able to join us then as well. As I say, I'm not sure if it's going to be Monday or Sunday. We're not sure yet. I'm going to get this, take this off now, I'm afraid. We don't want to turn with that, do we? OK, um, it's eight o'clock. Um, I'm going to go to the overhead. Welcome, everybody. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is um, a bird's mouth bowl. Um, they come in, you could, they can come in various shapes and sizes. The what, nice thing with the bird's mouth bowl is that's a bit of you, a little bit there, uh, turn it up a little bit. That's a bit of, I um, don't know what that is actually, oh, a bit of cherry. Um, I've done quite a few of these over the years, but I haven't done any for a while. And they mainly use that sort of size bit of wood, about three, three inches in diameter. Um, but the ideal situation is to have a um, almost an egg-shaped limb and I'll go to the overhead now and the piece I've got on here is a piece of U and this is the ideal sort of shape if you like uh, where this this will be the the uh, bird's mouth beak that will be the entrance if you like that will be the base now this piece here is a little bit bigger than I normally turn for them but nevertheless it's uh, just under five inches along the widest point here and f just on four inches on that width there and the length of the blank is about five and a half inches. So what I've done is eyeballed the centre of this plane here and then I 
follow that down this side. I followed it down this side here, drew a line and then measured the distance between those two edges there and punched and did the same on the other side. So I've got as near as I can the centre of the blank. And then what I've used here is a four prong um, drive because I was able to bang that in with a wooden mallet to get it because it's not a completely flat surface to get a good grip and then I've just brought up a live centre. Now normally when I turn this sort of size I start it's in that I start turning that at around 2000 revs the reason being there's quite a bit of air there obviously um, and I'm not saying that and I'll show my face for this to show I'm genuine I'm not saying that I'm advocating everybody turn everything at 2000 rpm if you're not comfortable with doing that don't do it um, you have to take lighter cuts and because when you're turning air the quicker the speed you can manage the less chance there is of a catch but obviously a newer turner is going to be a little bit worried about the the noise it makes and the the air spinning around and everything else so I'm not saying you have to do it this way but that's how I like to do it and uh, because it makes it a little bit easier when I'm trying to get it to the shape I want. Okay so what I'm going to start off with is a um, spindle roughing gouge and because it's you I'm going to be putting my respirator on but we know that you can hear me with that I'll get that piece of okay so what I'm going to do is to make sure everything is locked down being it's wet wood this wood is actually 20% so it's going to move a bit after I finish turning it. Now this is one of those times I'm getting a bit of vibration there, but I'm going through the vibration. And uh, we got about 1800 revs there. And I'm going to start with that. I'm going to be starting with my one and a quarter inch spindle roughing gouge to try and get a, a straight surface if you like. Just light, light, light cuts. All I want to do is make it round on this plane. Nice and easy. Stop the lathe and bring the tool rest nearer. While I'm doing that, as you see, it's also give, we're doing we're cutting uh, end grain here as well, of course. Just for the newer turner, if I can just, I've done this before. If you're turning at a lower speed, like here, let's just say you're turning at 650, you you listen to the difference. It's clunkety, 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 clunk, which apart from being not a very pleasant experience, it also increases the risk of the tool getting caught between the tool rest and the wood. But I, I will say again and again, I'm not advocating that the newer turners should turn. I'm now turning at 1700 revs. So again, anchor and just lift the handle and ease yourself into the wood. And nice, nice, fine cuts. Unfortunately, with this sort of a turning, there's no uh, really quick method because you're cutting so much air. So it gives you an opportunity to have a nice chat. And I'm not going to rush it just because I can't edit it. <laughs> I 
And another thing as well, when you're turning something like this, always make sure that you, because it's wet, always make sure you check that you've tightened up. You can see there already that we're starting to get a bit of a profile there. And once that and that are flat, then I can start to do some shaping. start to move the gouge a little bit now, do some very rough shaping, just No, I got a little patch there. Now the other thing I was going to say to you is that you don't want to go that way here because we want to try and keep the bark on on this area. So when we're doing, I made a mistake there, you want to come in that way so that you minimise the chance of losing your bark. notice I'm not going to the end. I want to leave that bark alone at the end. Now the reason I'm using this is I'm going to try and get rid of this as quickly as possible because of the live if you like. So we'll get in there. It's going to take a little while. So you just have to bear with me. It might change now for a minute. Now I'll go to the 3 8 bull gouge. Just drop that a little bit. <coughs> And come in this way. Again, just to show you, or the the, uh, the newer turner, if I'm going in this way, I'm minimising. I've got quite a nice transition there with the cambium layer, with the uh, with the bark. If I went this way here, there's a good chance, you can see it's a little bit of feathery there, I could rip the bark off. So I'm giving myself as much, and don't forget, as I say, tighten down every now and again. What I'm trying to do here is a little crack up here in there, but that's quite characteristic of you anyway, so I'm not bothered about that. Uh, so again, just nice light cuts now with the bowl gouge. I'm 
I'm going to be wanting to form a tenon on this end at the end. And I'm just getting some idea of the shape. I don't care about the bark on this end because that's all going to be going anyway. Stop and have a look. So I'm getting there. There's a bit of a dip here. Um, I have been, I'll just show you this. I quite like sometimes to leave bark areas on, uh, adds to the character. So we'll just see how it goes and what the figuring is like. It's going to end up quite a bit smaller than it is now because you've got to get rid of the the bark to make we've got to get rid of this here essentially um, and this here so it's got to the diameter is going to be quite reduced but the idea here is I'm starting here already to form the shape that I'm looking for uh, for the bird's mouth effect. Just lifting the handle, twisting slightly, just going in, into the middle, nice and easily. And the other way, as I say, there's quite a bit of work to do yet. So what I'll do is see how far down we're going to have to go to get rid of this bark. Keep stopping uh, and seeing how it looks, how much is left. There's still quite a bit there, not so much here. So we can start to come in there a bit. I quite like it with the bark on the outside as well, but we'll see how that looks. You see, when you're doing this uh, at this speed, it gives you an opportunity. Again, I'm not, not saying that the newer turner should do it. It gives you the opportunity to be a little bit more aggressive and take a bit more wood away. And we'll come in from, we'll come in from this end now so that we keep the bark on. What I'm aiming for here, obviously not at this stage, it's going to be reduced quite a bit, is it's going to be a cove here so that it flares out for the uh, what I call or what is known as the beak part but we've got a fair bit of wood to get rid of before we start considering that. Always check, keep checking that you're getting because the vibration as well can make things loosen up. So keep checking that you're nice and tight. Lift the handle, going towards the middle. Keep floating the bevel. And going in again from the outside in. nearly at, didn't get it quite central there, but mind you having said that, there was a dip on this side and there's not on that side. So again, it's not essential to have it perfect on these in my opinion, because sometimes leaving the bark on can uh, add to the character of the piece, in my opinion.
You see the knots here where the limbs have been, uh, limbs have come out there, there's a bit of cracking, but that is very, uh, as the more experienced turners know, that is very characteristic of you anyway. I'm just looking here now to see how we're looking for um, a tenon. How far down I'm going to be? I'm going to be using cylinder jaws, so um, I've got, I should think, I want solid wood there. I just think the tenon's going to have to go about there, I would think. Actually, we can form that now, and then, uh, so we'll form the tenon, we'll start to form the tenon anyway, so I know where I am with regards to solid wood. and then it'll give me some idea of the overall proportions. So I've got solid wood here, that's got to be enough. I might go in a little bit. Now what I want to do is to go in a bit further. Now I want to leave that shoulder there now that shoulder, the chuck jaws will go up to that shoulder and that shoulder will be what I'll be able to part off from so it won't be right on the face of the jaws. Now I've got sufficient solid wood there, I might go in just actually a little bit deeper. No, I think we'll leave it there. So all I've got to do now is get the Correct diameter. Look at the old calipers. I'm pretty sure they are set to my. Yeah, they're set to my cylinder jaws. So we've got a fair bit to go there. Well, a little bit anyway. So we'll just get this uh, tenon down to the right diameter. Get rid of that. But it doesn't matter, normally you'd have to cut that off, you see, because it would foul on the back of the jaws. But these cylinder jaws are very deep. So and make sure there's a nice square shoulder there. <coughs> Just check the diameter. Yeah, that's fine. So that's gonna go on to the jaws and I can actually put them on to the chuck now. We can do that and then we'll know what we're playing with as they say. So take out the old four prong drive. cylinder jaws always the moment of truth and as you see I've got that little shoulder there does the camera pick that up what's happened hang on a minute well, oh sorry <laughs> Sorry about that, I've, I hit the camera, do apologise. Um, you can see there the shoulder I've left here, so the front of the jaws goes snugly up against there. Tighten that down, just check it, see what it's looking like. That's looking pretty good. And you can also bring up your tail stock, and I know I do this, I mean it's for the newer turners, to be honest with you, I keep saying that. You can bring up your tail stock just to check, 
uh, and that will centralise it nicely and then tighten down. Um, and as I kept saying, keep saying, because it's not dry, it's wet wood, always check how your grip on your, on your jaws because the fibres will compress. On dry wood, not as much, but on wet wood they will compress, so always check. Now I can keep the um, tailstock up for the moment. Now I know exactly what dimensions I'm working towards. And obviously the diameter is going to reduce quite a bit. I think we'll take a little break there. Any questions? Just for a minute. I'll have a quick uh, vape. Sorry about knocking the camera, that was really annoying. Right, won't it be going 25 minutes? Um, are there any, uh, any questions at this particular stage? And that there is not vape, that is condensation. It is cold in here. Just a basic username wood turning. <laughs> Hello there, how are you? Good evening. Peak Twisted Tree, good evening. Ian in the shed. Why the spindle roughing gouge and not a bowl gouge? Um, I wanted to try um, using the spindle roughing gouge be because um, it just got the middle bit done. Um, that's the way I wanted to do it tonight. I normally would use the bowl gouge, but I, you know. Let's mix it up a bit. The thing is with the spindle roughing gouge, I'll be honest with you, it, it's a heavy one, it, it does get rid of a bit of wood, but it's only useful to a certain area, then I quite agree, the bowl gouge is, as you saw, is a, a much better option. How fresh is the U? The U was uh, cut down about uh, two or three months ago, um, <clears throat> and um, it's at the moment it's about 22 between 20 and 22 percent so it's not soaking wet but it's not dry either by any means if the bark has to come off for safety before you turn steve ash has asked um, well i think it's experience really if, if you've got a face shield on if it's thick bark you isn't really the, on here it's not really thick bark it's quite um it's quite thin so it's more likely to give you a slap if it comes off but the way you turn it will uh, dictate whether it comes and slaps you off if, it, if i was turning the limb um, the correct way as a spindle with side grain end grain either end then i would take as much bark off as possible of things like ash etc before i turned but to be quite honest with you uh, with you it doesn't really matter what happens is cherry believe it or not if you use that that will turn around and slap you and, and really quite uh, hurt quite a bit but bark like oak etc then if it's loose take as much loose bark off as you can if not all the bark if you're not going to want to try and save it perhaps we tier four type should stray <laughs> i'm obviously missing this it's all about the uh <coughs> Paul Smith, how do you keep your lathe bed from getting damp and rusting? Well, this is not uh, soaking. I, I, this is what I use. I use uh, machine wax. And uh, I use that on a regular basis. But when I'm, when I'm doing wet wood like this, um, I always will give it, I have done before I started tonight, I'll just give it a quick, quick wipe with that. And I don't buff it. Um, when I'm turning wet wood, I don't buff it. But when I'm turning really wet wood, um, I, I literally put towels over the bedways. <laughs> but there you go, that's just me. Mike, what's your preferred approach of holding square spindle stock with one end free? What's your preferred approach of holding square spindle stock with one end free? Right, okay. Um, if it is completely square, I have no problem with um, taking uh, jaws like this, Ben, um, and putting the corners in the gaps of the jaws, providing it goes in at least, you know, half, three quarters of an inch. 
Um, I I have been slated saying that, but I've done it on a number of occasions. Um, the ideal thing is to turn a tenon, to be honest with you, but um, I've done it that way as well, as well as many other people have. Still relatively new to turning. Can you just skim over what I have to look out for when getting logs for turning? Um, to be honest with you, um, that's a question from Edward Watling. I'm sure other people will um, chime in. When I started turning, anything wood was fair game. Um, and any, anything you can get, if you go walking in the woods, any, any, as long as it's not rotten, obviously, completely rotten, um, you, you really want to look for something that's come down fresh that you can seal the ends so it cracks as little as possible and keep your logs as long as possible when you're storing them because they will crack whatever you do but it means that the cracks won't go in so far before you're ready to turn it. Right, okay, um, we'll get back on and as I say, uh, I was asked, I forgot who asked me actually, about using the spindle roughing gouge. Again, for the newer turners, normally I would, I wanted to, I wanted to try the, the spindle roughing gouge on this because there was a lot of air and I was cutting, um, you're cutting end grain, obviously, with air. And I just wanted to get it not so much flat, but just get rid of the bulk of that wood so I could start to shape it. I did a very, very slight shape with the, with the spindle roughing gouge and then turn to the bowl gouge, uh, to the, to the bowl gouge. Can you turn a crack log? Yes, you can, but be careful. Um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, the answer really is no. If it's cracked badly, then no. If it's just the ends are cracked, you can cut, cut off the cracked ends and turn it. Um, you have to use a bit of common sense when turning wood that have got, has got faults in it. If you're a more experienced turner, then you've got more chance of uh, not having an accident and getting it right. Is there any wood, Paul Morris, is there any wood you don't turn and don't like turning? Um, I don't like turning um, fur. I turned a fur bowl <laughs> on a live a while ago for my son, one of my sons, stepson. Um, he's got it now, he's happy with it, but it was a pig to turn. Um, I don't like turning um, willow. I haven't actually turned a whole project of willow. I started turning willow and I gave up. Um, there, life's too short. Um, I like turning woods, I like to turn. If you can smack it without breaking it, it doesn't spray much water. You need a wiper on your face shield. It's Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's not good to turn, but I, 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 don't, I don't like it. I don't like being soaked, I'm afraid. Hi Bob. Right, I'm going to carry on and let you guys, I'm going to have a quick drink and uh, we'll carry on with this. Right, go to the overhead and put my respirator on. Okay, so back to the back to the bowl gouge. I'm using a, um, a half inch bowl gouge purely because there was that air there but uh, I quite like using it. That all the 3 8 bowl gouge, not a problem. In fact, for the bottom, I'll go to the 3 8 because it's a bit tighter, and we'll bring this round here. Just, you can see there, I can work round to that, but there's a fair bit to go yet, so we could use the 3 8 And the reason I keep stopping the lathe is to see how far I've got to go to get got a fair way to go yet. But knowing me, I will most probably leave some of this bark on. So there.
<coughs> Just to go on a little bit more, I think. I'm just doing this to see how much we've got to do to take to get this to solid wood. It's going to be too it's going to be too small for my liking, you see. So we're going to have to improvise, I think. That's what I love about you. You is lovely to turn, it really is. Now, if I pull, you see, I've looked at this now, and if I pull this down, I will get solid wood down here. And for that, I'm just going to take my half inch spindle gauge and just try that now. Very light cuts now. Nice and easy. Now I've got solid wood, solid wood, some lovely figure as you'd expect from you. Um, I quite like. Uh, right, this is this is where it's got to come down a bit here. So we'll, again, I'm just using my half-inch spindle gauge. It's quite, it's a bit big. Okay, it's a bit big, so I just will move that in a bit. Working your way in to keep the bark on. Swinging round. Let's have a look. Just a tiny bit more, I think, and what I'm going to do now is to just get, do a sort of a cove. Yeah, I quite like that. So now I've just got to refine the body and uh, blend it in. Just picking up the cut nice and steadily. Nice and slowly.
It's got to come in. You see, the thing is, if you come in too much here, make that cove too deep. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I quite like that. It's not a little bit of sheer scraping maybe. Uh, but the problem is because it's wet wood, it's still wet, uh, it's unlikely I'm going to be putting a finish on it. Because um, it's got to move a bit. I will put some sanding sealer on it. I'm going to keep the bark here, I like that. A lot of people won't like that, but I do. And it's my bowl, so I'm going to do what I want to do. Just shear scraping with the bottom wing now. Just to get rid of a few tool marks. And because there is bark on it, it is a little bit um, bumpy. Because you're not getting a, uh, a really smooth cut because you've got still got some air there but um, just a little bit more shear scraping very gently now I could use Simon Hope's uh, negative rake scrapers uh, but the reason I'm not doing that is because I think when you're doing lives like this you should be using the standard tools uh, that most people, uh, like a, a newer turner, will have. It's just a little bit lumpy there. Just, just a little tiny bit there. Pick up the cut and then Yeah, I prefer that. Sorry I'm not talking much at the moment because I'm concentrating because I'm not actually sure what shape I'm going to end up with. But I think I've got to keep that. I quite like that. Yeah, we've got some cracking coming here as well. A little bit of sheer scraping just to smooth it off a bit. And then that'll, that'll sand up nicely. A tiny bit more there. And I think we have it. So that's the basic. Well, it's got to come in a bit more there. Hang on. <laughs> I'll just get a fresh edge for that actually. 
I just want to make that, that uh, cove a little bit more pronounced. So pick up the cut, swing him in, twist, 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 twist. There we go. Yeah, that's a little lump there, we get rid of that. And then we'll hollow it out. Yes, I quite like that. I'm going to leave it there for now. I've just got to do a little bit of the top here and then I promise you <laughs> I'll start the hollow. That's good. That's okay. I'm not sure whether that's going to be too large, I don't think so. By the time I've taken that down, that's going to be okay. Okay, we've, we've had three quarters of an hour, and uh, we'll, yeah, quite pleased with that, actually. Looking okay. Let's have a quick drink. Ah. What's all this? Oh, that's fine. So, any questions uh, about that uh, up to now? Hello, Wood Dude. Oh, my first world were radial two lines, got some watermarks. Mm -hmm. Right, gonna have a little comfort break. And we all know what that means, don't we? How's that? Is that better? Sorry. <laughs> yes. 
That's it. It's back now. The problem I've got is <laughs> I've got to get used to the fact that I haven't got to worry about being tethered to a wire now. I went wandering off to the other part of the workshop to see if I could uh, bring out the PVA, but it's actually in the ne in next door in the uh, in the log bit in my log store. So I'm afraid I can't. Yeah, so there is sound. I've got sound dead. Sorry, mate. It's here. Look, I can see myself. <coughs> Yeah, sorry about that. What, there's still no sound? Oh yeah, there is now, that's good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, what it is, I've got this new mic and I've got no wires, obviously, and uh, I went wandering off and I, when I had a um, comfort break and we know what I was doing there, I won't do it, but I was using that, um, I turned the sound off so you couldn't hear me sucking away at my vape. Mike, if you didn't keep drinking all that Diet Coke, you wouldn't need all these comfort breaks. Yes, I know he's vaping. Yeah, that's good. Okay, Ben. <laughs> uh, both of them, actually. Right, okay. Ed's getting annoyed because I'm talking and not turning. Only kidding, Ed. Um, I could have put my Diet Coke in my uh, Oliver's wood turning mug, couldn't I? There's too much dust in it. Okay, let's go to there. <clears throat> so that's as far as we've got at the moment. And um, the, the, barking, the bark areas here I quite like and I'm going to keep them on. And so now we can remove the tailstock and also, get rid of the live centre because we don't want to stick our elbows. And uh, that one there, yeah. Okay, that one there for a minute. So, what I'm going to do now is to hollow him out. Now, what we've got to decide here is I don't know if I can get that to zoom. Hang on too many cameras now. Right, what you've got to decide here is uh, how thick you want the lip, as it were, of the bird's beak. Now, I'll start in the middle, obviously, and work out, and come to, I should think about that thickness. Now, when I no, if I'm back hollowing, that's okay while I'm on the hard wood, but if I'm on the bark, I must always go in, otherwise I'm going to lift the bark off. It started to lift there, but that's actually not from me. That's something else, but most of that will go anyway. If the bark does come off, it's not really a problem because you can still get the same effect, but it's nice to keep it on if you can. So, respirator on, and just have a quick look, 3 8 ball gouge I think, just to begin with. We can turn the speed down a bit now if you want, to about, about 1500 revs, and just, no, something I forgot to do, and I'll be told off because I said always check that your jaws are tight because it's a wet wood. I didn't do that. It's only a little bit, but there's a bit there. Because I say you're compressing the fibres. Okay. Let's put a, get the fresh edge there. And just and don't forget to lock your banjo down as well. That needs to come up just a little bit. And we always turn the lathe off, don't we, everybody, before we move anything. So just a, a nice push cut.
And don't forget to be mindful as well that you've got this concave neck. So when you're hollowing, you've got to get down to here. Uh, then you can start to hollow properly, but be very mindful as you're going in here, you could very well cut it off here. And as they say, don't ask me how I know that. I don't know if that's the best one, or that, that's the best one. I think that's the best one for now, and it? it'll do for now. So again, going in very gently. too much more just just a little bit I think and I think that's got to be Yeah, that's got to be it for there, I think. So now we think, now we're talking of hollowing. So what I'll do there now is just make a little, this isn't necessary, but I like to do that, make a little indent here. And then use my 3 8 spindle gouge to just bore a hole for the depth I'm looking at, which is going to be about there. You want to be smack on centre for this. And there we go. Well, when the tool is horizontal, you're on the centre line. I'll turn the speed down a little bit because it generates quite a bit of heat. You want to see this a bit. And just put your spindle gouge in and then rotate. remove start off with the flute uh, about seven o'clock and then as you're pushing in start to rotate the flute so it's facing up and rotate Let's see what depth we got there not a fair way to go yet So that is. Now we can start back hollowing with the 3 8 if we want. Just some nice gentle back hollowing. Being careful not to go past. fresh edge on there. Right, okay, I'm going to go to my preferred method, and you all know what that is. It's my little mini hollower from Simon Hope, and this will make light work of it. Change the angle here. Uh, let's see a bit better. Actually, I should bring that in a bit. Uh, bear with me a minute. I shall just move 
this camera. Hold on a minute. Working on the fly here. Okay, now I'm just going to sort out the... That's better. How's that? That's okay. Right, carry on. Carry on, Macduff. speed here. Just gone up to 1500 revs now. That's better. Coming on. We've got a few cracks up here in here. As I say, it's still still moving. We can actually try the bigger one. Getting there.
Just end up over there now. Not far to go. I bet you're all wait, waiting for it to go through the bottom, aren't you? It's not far to go now. Just want to make that a little bit. Let's drop this down a bit. Just make that a little bit smoother. Nice transition there. That's better. Okay, a little bit more. Slightly. I think we're there, you know. Yeah, it's going in nicely there. I could just do with a little, a little fiddle. Is that going to be too big? No, that'll do. No, that's no good. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. We shall go in with that again, I think. All right, it's just a little edge there that I'm not happy with. That's better, that's rounded it. That's better, that's better. Okay, so basically that is the bird's mouth bowl shape. So that's how it's looking now. So what, I, what I'll do now is I'll give it a quick sand. I'm not going to go mad with the sanding because as I say it's still, still wet. We could just check again just out of interest what the moisture content is. It's got a bit of a crack here which I, uh, I'm going to have to treat I think. Um, yeah, 17, just under 17 degrees, uh, still moisture, 17, so it's got a bit of drying out to do yet. Now I don't want to waste this uh, and have it ruined on me, but what I'll do, I'll give it a quick sand, and uh, for the newer turners, just to show them what it looks like, uh, because you is such a lovely wood. So I'll give it a quick, a quick blast, just to get a fairly nice surface on it so that we can um, just put some sanding sealer on so it'll just bring out the the beauty of not me but the beauty of you <laughs> that was pathetic wasn't it really okay and uh, we'll start it off at 180 
Again, excuse the extractor. I'll just give it a, a quick go around. And the reason I prefer using an inertia sander to hand sanding is that you will get uh, an even scratch pattern, if you like, and less likely to have radial marks. There's a lot to do yet on this, but as I say, it's got to move quite a bit. But I think one thing I would say to you is when you're sanding, again, I keep, keep mentioning the newer turner, but um, when you're sanding this sort of an area, you don't want your fingers in there. So what I use is a, a piece of dowel Let's go back again. What I use is a... What's happened here? Sorry about this. My cameras are all the pot. Uh, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. That's what I wanted. Um, is a piece of dowel, and on the end of the dowel here is a piece of loop adhesive loop you buy it on eBay uh, hook and loop velcro and I wrap that around there and then of course my sanding pads will fit on there like so and if I lift that a little bit more like that as you can see I can do my sanding with my fingers well out of the line of fire I mean, normally I'd use the um, inertia sander with the extension arm, but obviously the entrance to this little chappy isn't big enough for that. So I could do all the sanding with my fingers well away. And even on the, uh, uh, the other piece up here, the, this bit here, that's a bit big for there. So yes, you guessed it, I've got a smaller piece of dowel and again I could just wrap that round there and I don't have to worry about the edges and I can do my sanding in perfect safety um, and I've got a few others I won't bore you with, even smaller for smaller things and that just keeps your fingers out of the way. Now the thing is with this that, as I say, it's got a few cracks on it. I want to let it dry out. I will finish it and I'll show it to you. I'll just put a bit of sanding sealer on there so that you can see that lovely grain. I'm not going to finish it off tonight, but I will not finish it off in another live because I don't think there'll be enough, enough um, content. But even the bark will darken nicely and it'll look a treat when it's finished. So I've got a bit of filling to do etc on this and I'm not going to waste it so uh, it's already cracking quite badly there so I need to do some work on that. Well that's basically the methodology if you like of a bird's mouth bowl. I'll take it out of the chuck no I won't, I'll take the chuck off and I'll hold it up for you so you can see what the shape is like. Now 
There you go. There she is. And uh, it's going to need a, bit, a little bit of work on it because the cracking is coming up here quite a bit. But, you know, at the end of the day, it'll look quite nice. I'll fill it with coffee ground most probably and CA glue. And uh, looks nice inside as well. OK. Well, that's it for today. I hope some of you found it of some interest. OK. Let's... Uh, my main goal today or tonight was to show you the method or one of the methods of doing a bird's mouth bowl. And I was like, you can, the, the nice thing about them is little bits of limb like that and you can make a nice little conversation piece. If the bark doesn't stay on, it doesn't really matter. It still has a nice shape to it. Thanks, Carol. Yeah, it's a lot, it, it, you really and truly has is, is got, uh, it makes, any, makes anybody look like uh, they know what they're doing. And uh, <coughs> if Mr. Oliver's still here, which I doubt, he knows damn well that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. Glad you enjoyed it, mate. Glad you enjoyed it. Bit of green words. Good piece, Mike. Thanks, Philip. Or get the hat on again. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get my hat on. Hang on. I'll, uh, excuse me, I'll just go out a shot for a minute. A lot of you didn't see my hat. There we go. Let me come up again. Oh, we're going to come up like this again. If I just, there, there's my Christmas elf hat. For those of you that didn't see it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Pete. Appreciate it, mate. You're a diamond. Thank you very much. What's the matter, Ed? What are you laughing at, mate? Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's the ears. It's the ears. Oh, thank you, Brian. You're very kind. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, I'll mention it again, that um, next Sunday or Monday, most probably be Monday, but I'll let you know, and so will Martin Saber smith we're going to have a, a, a dual live demo have a bit of a laugh i'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing but uh i'm sure we'll get up to no good whatever <clears throat> glad you enjoyed it graham thank you for coming appreciate it quick question what yeah yeah could you please do an end view of a spindle and bowl gouge yep is the answer to that You know what's coming now, don't you? Yeah. There, there's the end view of one of them. <laughs> there's the end view of the other one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> control yourself. OK, um, that is the bowl gouge. OK. It's uh, swept back wings, for fi uh, 55 degrees-ish. Don't get too hung up on... and. That's a parting tool. I'm sure I know what the difference between a parting tool and a spindle gouge. But then again, maybe I don't. I've lost my spindle gouge. No, there we are. Uh, that's the 3 8 spindle gouge. And again, swept back wings, and that's 45 degrees. And on the other end of that, I've got my 30 degree uh, bevel. The main, where the, the main thing is the difference in the depth of flute. The spindle gouge has a much shallower flute than the bowl gouge. Hope that answered your question, or that's what you were looking for. Good night, Leona. Thank you, Brian. That's very kind of you. Appreciate it. And Adrian Olson, thank you very much indeed. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Take that hat off. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my hat, mate. I like my hat. <clears throat> Glad you enjoyed it, Andy. It's my mate Andy from Planetly. I need more tools. Larry, don't be silly. I've sold a lot of tools. <laughs> 
I don't want to take this out of the truck because obviously um, I've got a bit of work to do on it. But for those of you that didn't see it, it's got to look quite nice when it's done, when it's finished. But you see there, look, can you see how it's cracked there? That's going to need a bit of TLC. But uh, nevertheless, oh Roger, that is extremely kind of you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, yes it is. Yes, they are. Ooh, my pride and joy. Robust tool rests. I will be doing a little review on them uh, in the new year. <coughs> Merry Christmas, Muriel. <laughs> yeah, I've given her, I'm going to give her those chocolates, Ed. Don't tell her. Don't tell her you gave them to me. Thank you, username. Appreciate it. A Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much indeed. I would like, well, one day I'd like to finish a piece that I start, but I'm not going to ruin it and I don't want to go on too long tonight because um, I'm tired. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. All the best, mate. Stay safe. Yeah, they're, they're brilliant. They, they really are. I'm not going to go into a, um, a tirade of uh, wonderment on robust tool rests. I've always, always liked the look of them and they are as good as I thought they would be and better. They're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Dario. Appreciate it. Adrian, have a great Christmas yourself, mate. You take care. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Harvey. I didn't say good evening to you or Roger Woods. Good evening to both of you and good night. Good night, Roger. Take care. Thanks, Douglas. Glad you enjoyed it. Hooray. <laughs> What's the array for, Ed? I missed, I missed that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Hodge Fodge. I'm, I'm back. To, I'm, only off, I'm off tomorrow and Tuesday, back in on Wednesday and Thursday, and then I got five days off. So, uh, that's not, you don't, I don't call that good luck, Bob. I call that miss for bad fortune, mate. <laughs> How am I going to fix the craft crack? Um, what I will do is use my favorite, especially for you, is coffee ground and uh, thin. Thin CA. Thin CA coffee. Thank you, Nigel. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, thin CA and coffee ground, I find works great. Uh, and this is just instant coffee. Um, I also use the coffee powder. Just the cheap stuff from any supermarket. And uh, I find that works great. Because what it, what it does, it mimics um, you know, these black lines on you. This is another little pot. It mimics those, so when you fill them with the uh, the coffee ground, it sort of mimics those. Thank you, Douglas. Take care. Good night, Kevin. All the best, mate. Take care. Thank you. That's all right, Bob. You didn't miss much, mate. I I, only, I got that far. There we are. Look, uh, just turned that out of a a log. If, uh, it'll be up on YouTube, you can watch it. It's not that, uh, it's just the, basically the methodology of doing a bird's mouth bowl. The orientation of the, uh, the log, etc. <clears throat> Cheers Andy, you take care mate. Have a good Christmas, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Merry Covid tier four Christmas. Ed. I don't think it matters what uh, can I take this can I take this off now please? Good night Martin, take care. Goodbye Blair, take care mate, thanks very much. Merry Christmas to you. Glad you enjoyed it, Grant. Thanks for coming, mate. Appreciate it. 
Thanks, Steve. You take care. Merry Christmas. Phil Boulder. <laughs> Thanks very much. I didn't see you come in, Phil. Sorry about that. Hope you managed to get some uh, shut eye while I was turning. Can we see the rear end? Joke. Can we see the rear? <laughs> Do you mean the rear end of what? Do you mean of my hat or of that? It hasn't been parted off. I might be missing the joke there. Sorry about that. Do you know what? See, it's Christmas. No, I'm not going to. Cheers, Simon. Take care, mate. Thanks, Doug. Merry Christmas, Di. You take care, mate, and see you in the new year, hopefully. Well, maybe even see you this side of Christmas. All the best, Doug. Take care. Merry Christmas to you, mate. Right, I'm just going... I'm not leaving. I'm just going to... Um... Hello, Maggie. Have a wonderful Christmas yourself, my dear. Merry Christmas, Bob. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. I'm just going to go out of picture. And nobody, nobody knows what I'm doing, do they? There we are. If I can't be seen, I can't be told off. Good night, Gareth. Take care, mate. Thanks very much indeed. Have a good Christmas. Thanks, Di. You take care. Show my butt, my Borodar. Not Star Borodar. God, I don't speak Welsh much now. I don't speak it at all, really. Thanks, Donald. Take care. Christmas. Oh, there you are, look. That is my space heater. It has now gone down to... Uh, Ten degrees and it's come on. I'll go and switch it off. It's a bit loud, my old space heater. <laughs> good night, Ed. Thanks very much for coming. Give my love to Karen and give my very best to your good son Joe as well. And have a great Christmas if I don't speak to you, mate. Take care. And thanks for delivering the uh, diamond belt before Christmas. I'll sharpen all my tools to nothing. Take care, mate. <coughs> okay, Ted Stewart. Stuart, thank you very much. Okay, guys, we'll give it another three or four minutes and then uh, call it a night, I think. Thank you, Ridley. I appreciate you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. My, my words, I'm not drunk, believe it, I'm tired. I've been, <laughs> I have been at work today at a quite a long shift um, and I'm starting to feel a bit tired now. Um, I tell you, uh, right, OK, Rob, what's a good size? See that there, Rob? That there produced, uh, where are we? Da -da 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 that sort of size bowl and that measurement is this is for Rob if I can find my ruler it's about three and a half inches I think yeah uh, three and a half three and a half round and about four inches length but the ideal thing is to try and get a part of a limb that is almost like that egg, egg shaped where the fatter bit is the bird's mouth like that yeah it doesn't have to be like that you can do it from a, a round piece but though that's the that's the sort of size ones that I I normally do but I just decided to go a bit larger today <coughs> My pleasure, Robin. Thank you very much for your support, my friend. OK, Rob.
Good night, Richard Old. Yes, Pete says five inch branch, yeah. I'll tell you what, Pete, you know your stuff. Look at that. Well, that's actually four inches. Four inches by three. But you, you can do whatever you like. You, you, you can do whatever you like. I'm going to take this off now. And I'm going to put this one on because it's still a bit nippy in here. Oh, that's better. John Dem Jerry Dempsey. <laughs> that's all right, Jerry. No problem at all. This is this is for Jerry Dempsey. That's how far I got with the bird mouth. Um, it's got a few cracks in it. Needs some work on it. I don't want to waste it because it's beautiful wood. So um, I'll be finishing that at a later date. Dave Roth. Hello, Dave. Merry Christmas, Dave. Uh, give my love to Fee. Yeah, we'll chat before Christmas. Yeah, hopefully. You take care, my friend, and thanks for popping in. Sorry I didn't welcome you. I didn't know you were here. If I'd known, I'd have shut down immediately. Well, thank you, just a basic username. I love that. You take care. Have a great Christmas to you and yours, my friend, and I hopefully see you the new year. Thank you, Mr. P oh, Mr. Keith. <laughs> Keith P, if you can see him there, is my work colleague, Mr. Keith. And uh, it was Mr. Keith that gave me Wi-Fi in the garage. Good old Mr. Keith. Cheers, Keith. If I don't see you, mate, well, I might see you. I'm back in Wednesday, Thursday. Thanks for the offer for working today, by the way. But um, I had to have tomorrow off as well. <laughs> How long will it take to dry? Um, this time of year, I'll, what I'll do, I'll, I'll wrap it in cling film to slow the drying process a bit after I've filled that crack. Um, I would think it'll be sort of February, March time before it's dry enough to finish. Maybe a bit less than that, it all depends. Take care, Peter Cross. Have a great Christmas, mate. You take care, thanks for coming. Have a very Merry Christmas to you as well, Bill Kennedy. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, you're in tomorrow, then you're off. Okay, Keith. Um, well, have a great Christmas, mate, and I'm sure we'll uh, be in touch over the Christmas period, seeing we're not going anywhere now. Nobody is, so um, keep in touch, mate. <clears throat> right, I think that's it, guys. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, I'll make one more plug. Next Sunday or Monday, um, all being well, Martin and I will be doing a collaboration. Um, I'm not sure which day it is, but obviously we'll let you know. Just going to gonna have a bit of fun, a bit of turning and a bit of a natter. So uh, that'll be next Sunday or Monday will be Martin and myself. That's Martin Saban Smith. Well, once again, guys, have a very Merry Christmas. Stay safe. Give my love to all your loved ones. Thank you very much for your support during the year. And thank you very much for the super chats to those that donated. And uh, I hope to see you in the very, very near future. You take care and stay safe. Bye now. <laughs>